What's going on? So we're gonna hop right into it. If you haven't watched the review of this controller, make sure you stay till the end or go back, watch the review before you buy it to, and then come back here to learn how to do everything. So very first thing we're gonna do is the block is not hooked up to anything, FYI, is we're going to turn the controller on like so, and then we're gonna connect it to the switch. So in order to do that, you need to come to your controller, come to your grips right here, and then you're gonna hold the home button and A button at the same time, and that's gonna change it to the switch mode. You'll know because the light turns red light here like so. And once it's there, it's already connected, but I'm gonna disconnect it just so you guys can see real quick. So this will start blinking. That's your connect button right there. All you would need to do is hold it. You'll see it start blinking. It should disconnect from it for a split second. There you go, it's disconnected and then it dis just connected right back. It's as simple as that to connect it to the switch. Now you can do this with the dongle. Remember if the if this is docked, you can use the dongle in the switch itself and then you can plug this up into the dongle or into the switch so you have the dongle and the charger hooked up at the same time. That way you don't have to continue moving and, and around. Moving on. And one last thing is, unfortunately, this does not wake up the Nintendo Switch for you that are going to ask me. Yeah, it doesn't wake it up, unfortunately. So that's kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. Moving on. Of course, this can be used wired as well on the Nintendo Switch, and that's going to be your best for your FPS games and stuff like that. But honestly, if you play on Switch, you might as well just play wired because be real, it's not really a whole lot going on there when it comes to FPS shooter games in a competitive world. So let's move on. You can connect this thing to your phone as well. If I hold home button and B at the same time, it'll go into green mode right here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the back button right here to get the flash. So after you hold the button to pair, it's gonna be flashing like so. Just come down to your Bluetooth settings. It's actually gonna be an Xbox wireless controller. If you click on it, it'll pair, the light will turn flash or it will turn solid green and then you're connected. Simple as that. Move on. Just real quick, when I show you how to add the device to your PC. Now, if you plug this up to your TP PC with a dongle, it should automatically connect. If it does not, you simply, all you need to do is on the dongle itself. If you hold the button right there or tap it, it will go into connection mode and then tap the back button on your controller. Uh, you're gonna hold the home button and B to get the green light and it'll should connect automatically and you'll be good to go there. And again, you can plug up the dock to your PC and the dongle will work just as it should if you plug the dongle up. So you have kind of like a two in one USB port so you don't have to use two Two different usb ports the other way you can do it is come to bluetooth itself right here i'm going to reset the controller real quick so as the light is flashing all you need to do is go to bluetooth add a device on your pc if you want to add a bluetooth i would recommend using a dongle but for some of you crazy people out there you want to do it once it's flashing and going you'll see it come up as xbox controller input and then you're just going to click on it it's going to connect it it should turn the light solid and there you go you're connected bluetooth it's easy peasy lemon squeezy moving on if you ever need to reset a controller because you maybe mess some settings up or something and you just want to kind of reset the controller you can by holding the home button right here for 10 seconds that'll actually do a hard reset on the controller and i think it just dumps everything out and you'll pretty much have a fresh controller to come back to once you do that it will vibrate and come back on like so and you'll know you've completed the resetting process what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to use everything on a controller without the app, everything you can use on the controller without the app, and then we'll go into the app, the very last thing we do. And again, if you didn't realize it, I do have chapters below, so if you just need to kind of jump around to see what you need to see and get out of here, completely understand. When you do that, all I ask for you to do is hit a like button and comment below, it helps the algorithm out and it shows me that I did a good job. Moving on. So to set the back buttons up, all you're gonna do is you're gonna hold the button right here. This is the function button and any of the back buttons. So I'm gonna just hold one of the back buttons right now. After two seconds, it's gonna vibrate and this light will start turning, you know, slowly, rapidly, slowly, rapidly. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Slowly blinking uh, orange. All you gotta do is hit the back, the button you wanna associate with it and you're done. Simple as that. Now, if I go to, Gamepad tester and show you guys and gals what it looks like real quick. The back button I just set up is A and that's what you get. A, A, so perfect. You can do that with all the buttons. No reason to stay on that, moving on. All right, so if you don't want a certain button back there or something um, 
programmed or anything, you don't want nothing associated with it, hold the back, hold the function button, hit the back button again like we did to set it up. It's going to vibrate, flash like so, and just hit the back button again. Once you hit that back button, you'll get a vibration, and then it'll blink a few times, and there's nothing on that button now. So you're good to go. Moving on. All right, let's move on to the turbo mode on this controller itself. All right, so all you're going to do, super simple, is hold the function button down, and then whatever button you want to associate with it, you'll just hit that button to make it a turbo mode button. So, like so, you hold the button down, and it hit A. See how it vibrated? It vib well, you didn't see it vibrate, but it vibrated and it turned orange. Now, if I hit the button, you see it flashing like so. That means it's on turbo mode and it's working. So we're on the first one right now. So if I hold the button down, it's on it. And then if I hold the function button down itself, let me see if I can get this in there for you. And then hit left on the D-pad and hold, just like so, it will vibrate. And then the, the, the speed goes up. If I do it again, it should go up again. And if I do it again, it should reset back to the simple one. So simple as that. And then if you want to get it off, all you have to do is hold the button you want to take off turbo mode and then double tap function button. Once you do that, it'll go off. And as you can see, it's not blinking anymore, which means there's no no uh, turbo going to it. Moving on. All right, let's move on to how to mess with your dead zones on the controller itself without the app. So to do this, all you have to do is actually hold the function button down. And then on the joystick itself that you want to either move the joy a dead zone up or down, you would just press it in. So use it as an actuation button. So hold the button down and then press it down. Down. So these controllers come at 12% for some reason out of the box. I don't agree with that, but that's how they are. And then you would, if you do that, it should take it down to zero. You just simply go to your gamepad tester at that point. Let's do that real quick. And then we'll just see if we have any stick drift, which we don't. It's not 100% centered like it was uh, before but it's so close, I really wouldn't worry about it if I wanted to. And if you wanted to, in the app, you can come here and kind of bump it up a little bit. So the only the only option I have to go back and forth in, I can't precisely control the dead zones from the triggers from here. So that's a little bit unfortunate. You do get something, so that, keep that in mind. And then some games, or most games now, like Fortnite and even Call of Duty, you can go in there and bump the dead zone up there too, and you have a little bit more precise aim on it or control over it. So if you don't have the PC or the, the PC app or the PC apps acting weird or something on you, then you can always do it that way as well. All right, so to turn the rumble motors on and off is simple on the controller itself. Hold the function button and hit right on the D-pad, it'll be off. If I hit right again, you'll feel it vibrate, which means it is on. Super simple, easy, let's go. All right, real quick, just wanna show you guys and gals, if you wanna control the volume of your PC with just the controller itself, why it's in X input mode, all you would have to do is literally hold the function button and hit up and down on the D-pad and you can see the little volume bar come up right there at the bottom and you know that's the volume on your PC. Super simple, little neat little trick to kind of control volumes and stuff. Talk about the gyroscope on the controller for a quick second here. I'm on the Nintendo Switch. Again, I don't use this all the time, but it's not working right now, right? I don't have anything because I have we have it set up to where when we hold the right trigger for Zelda, it automatically actuates. So you can see here now, I'm able to turn and, flip. and then once I get out of that, it goes away. So that's pretty cool, right? That's just kind of how it worked when I plugged the controller up. So that's, yeah, that's that. So gyroscope works really well on here. Let's talk about how to calibrate it real quick. So for calibration on the controller itself for gyro, all you would have to do is hold the menu button and the screenshot button at the same time. What'll happen is it'll turn purple like so. It's You can see it's kind of flashing purple. Make sure you have it on it. I'm not picking it up because you want it on a horizontal desk. And once it's done, it will flash like it did and it will turn back to the color it was in and you'll know calibration is complete on gyro. Super simple, super easy. So as far as I know, that's pretty much everything you need to know how to do on the controller itself. Uh, so first thing I wanna talk about about the app real quick is I do have an issue with the app. It seems like I'm not sure what's going on. I actually reached out to them through Discord to see if they can kind of help me out and once i figure it out i'll throw a quick like short video update on this particular problem so make sure you stay tuned for that if you're not subscribed but with setting profiles up i can set a profile up and it disappears if i restart the app it's no longer there sometimes it just disappears right there on the spot 
So I do definitely have that of an issue, but once I set a profile up and put it on the controller, it's fine. It's there, even if it disappears off the PC, it's still there. So I just wanna throw that out there to you. So if you're not the only one, if you're having that issue as well, let me know in the comments. That way I know this isn't a just me issue so I can make sure I push on this to get it fixed or to find out what's going on with it through the company itself. So with that being said, let's go through the app real quick and talk about what we got here. So first thing first is your update. You need to do an update or anything like this, your firmware and all that, you can do that from here. Now note, when you do update the controller itself, you need to have it put in uh, plugged in wired plug it straight into the pc you're not gonna be able to update this through the dongle itself so just keep that in mind because you'll get an update filed and you can start having issues further there with that being said uh you also can update the app itself uh i am on the current version which is 1.0.32.2 and the i am on the current version of the gale uh software 2 which is a v uh two v 2009 moving on so this right here is literally just to reset your controller. If you got bug issues and stuff like that, you can just come here, hit yes on it, reset. You'll get a vibration on your controller and you'll know it's reset. Here is your macros. Now this is pretty cool because with macros, you can literally set up, I believe it's 50 different buttons. So I would come in here, right? And then I would pick how I want to actuate it. I want to actuate it with M1. I would literally come here. I can do tap, long press, tap cycle, whatever one want to do. So we're going to hit tap. All right, and then we're just gonna come in here, empty, we're gonna set up here. Uh, this takes a little bit of a time, right? I mean, you have to go in here and set it up how you want to and stuff, but once you have it set up, it's set up. Even if the profile disappears, I tested this earlier and it worked. And then you can come in here and then do all this like so. And you come in here and mess with the values right here of how fast they go and stuff. You can mess with the duration, intervals, all that. I have it set up to five on M1 to tap. Once I do that, I'm going to save it. We're just gonna name it test. Okay, we're gonna put it on like so. And there you go, it should be on. So if I minimize this and I tap the M1, it's going through all the buttons. It's only five of them, but you can set 50 of them up. So whatever you like use for farming and stuff like that, it makes it pretty cool to be able to do that. So just keep that in mind. All right, so let's go to this part right here, which is the configuration and all that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a profile and we'll start from here. So from right here, you will come in here, you can mess with your sensor sensitivity and all that. Um, you can come in here to sensor, uh, sensor horizontal vertical ratio. I don't mess with any of that to be 100% honest with you guys. Your sensor curve, a lot of people just say, leave it like it is. There's a lot of people that will disagree with you and do this, that, and the other. Let me know how you set your sensor curve up in the comments below. Maybe I'll go try it out and try to play some games with it. Your motion axis is right here. So you know you can mess with all that, set it up how you want to set it up and everything. I'm good. I'm not doing all that. Some stuff is cut off right here for some reason. So global switch close. All right. You can see like it's like it's like the app is needs another update or something because there's stuff cut off here that I can't even read for you guys and gals that I can explain stuff to you, which uh, this is just pretty much how to control the gyroscope, how to get it activated and stuff like that. Um, you can set a button up down here to do it. So, you know, your right stick for gyroscope, all this, that and the other. But we're going to leave it at global for now. And then you're, you can do axis reverse if you want to. I don't mess with gyro to be 100% honest with you. I know some of y'all do, you love aiming with it and stuff. That's cool. There it is. <laughs> Let's move on to the sticks for a second. So, okay, if you were watching how to do it without the app, you've seen that I told you it comes at 12 out of the box. Don't agree with that. Uh, I wish it was a little bit lower, but you can lower here. And you have control over each stick to lower here. Again, if you, you lower it all away and it's not completely centered up, doesn't mean it's gonna have drift, it just means it's not completely centered up. You come in here and mess with it and stuff like that. You stick reverse uh, response curve is actually what I was talking about just in the previous uh, menu. Uh, I always leave it to just, 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 just fine. You know, if you wanna try performance or something like that, you can go ahead. There's a couple different modes here already for you to do. I'm, you know, I'm just gonna leave it normal because I don't know a whole lot about that and I don't wanna uh, screw something up and be even worse at Call of Duty than I already am. And then your reverse axis is right there if you want to do that as well. I'm not gonna do any of that. So let's move on to triggers. You can choose triggers. Tr 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 All right, so triggers are pretty cool. So what you have is um, potentially what you can do, you can turn hair triggers on, which is fine if you wanna do that. What I like to do is I like to come in here and just bring these all the way down to five. 
What happens is if I bring these all the way down to five, is that their left row? Yes, okay, so that's the left. And I come in here, oops, and I barely tap it, it goes up to 100%. You see how it's all the way up to 100% when I barely tap it. Sorry, I'm looking at the screen to make sure it, uh, it's, it's, it sees everything. Um, so you can do that. Uh, you can take this all the way down, the, this right here, all the way down to five, it looks like. It was just at two, wasn't it? Yes, it was, it was just at two, but now it's at five, it's okay. I was gonna recommend not taking it all the way down. And the reason being is because when you're in game and you're holding your controller and you have it at zero, the minimum, you're gonna accidentally actuate the button. I've done this a lot of times just running around, especially if you're one of the ones that like to use vibrations or the uh, rumble packs and all that, you're gonna actuate this button a lot more than you're gonna want to. So I would just recommend having an eight five or even, I mean, two would probably be okay, but definitely no lower than two. And I would test it. And if you notice you actuating a button accidentally, I would literally just come in here and bump this up 1% until you get to where you want. You can turn hair triggers on, really no point to once you've already activated it like this in my personal opinion. So let's move on to key maps. All right, so this is where we get into how to set up the controller. You have complete control over this. You can literally set any button up in here. So you don't like the A being the A button. You can come in here and set it up to something else. You can come in here and set up as a keyboard freaking button if you wanted to, which is pretty cool. You can set turbo modes up from right here. You don't have control over the speed of the turbo. You will have to hold the function button and hit left on the D-pad to still go through the different modes, which is 5, 10, and 25 if you skipped ahead of this. Uh, so just hold the turbo mode or hold the, hold the function mode and hit left on the D-pad to switch between the turbo modes. So what I want to tell you, show you real quick is the keyboard function. And this is where it gets pretty cool in my personal opinion. So if I'm a streamer, uh, or if you're a streamer, I should say, and you want to bind these back buttons to maybe OBS, Streamlabs or something like that to switch between scenes on the fly. So if you don't have a stream deck, right? You don't have a foot pedal and you don't want to buy one, you can just use the controller to do that with, and that's pretty cool. So I actually went ahead and set something up. You would just go into the app you're using. So I'm using OBS, set it up as a hotkey to switch between a scene, and then you'll be good to go. I'm using escape as a hotkey, so I'm gonna set that up as M1, right? And if I hit M1 on the controller right here, it automatically goes to my other, uh, what you call it now, come over here and hit PC, yeah. So yeah, just hit M1. And it goes there and I could set it up to do different things and different scenes and stuff to go through all kinds of different scenes, which is pretty cool, right? So I really like that. You can set this thing up to do all kinds of different things. Uh, this is why a lot of people love the keyboard function on controllers itself. I get asked all the time, hey, can you can you bind control or keyboard functions to the buttons? Yes, you can with this controller. So keep that in mind. Again, you come in here and set anything up you want. As you can see, we get all the way down. You can map literally everything on the controller other than the home button. You can't map the home button, it doesn't look like, but everything else can be mapped. So that's pretty cool. And then we have shake. And then shake is literally, well, it's the Roma mobile. You want to turn down to where it doesn't like, you know, shake real, real hard. You can do that. If you want to turn it all the way up to where it shakes super hard, you can do that. It's not an issue. It's whatever you want to do. Before you do, do anything else, so we went in here, we mapped that, we messed with the triggers, we got the sticks down to where we want it, and we messed with the motion and all that. Don't just hit back. Come over here, hit save, name your profile. We're going to name this COD, and we're going to hit OK. Well, we're going to try again. We're going to hit COD, and we're going to hit OK. You heard the controller vibrate. It's saved right there. You can click on it here, and you'll be good to go. All right. Again, remember, like I said before, there has been an issue with the app. As you can see, it literally just did it on the spot. I'm actually glad it did that. It just disappears. It's in here, right? So you see it's not there no more. I'll hit M1. It still works like it's supposed to. I hit M1 and it went to the, went to the screen and everything, but it's just not there anymore. Actually, let's just go ahead and go here and finish up here. So yeah, there's that. If I miss something in the on the controller itself. Go ahead and comment below. I will probably just make a short for it real quick. I hope you guys enjoy these style videos that I just come in here and literally show you how to use the controller from start to finish. By everything I've learned on the controller itself as doing the reviews on these controllers and stuff. If you do, it'd be very much appreciated to like the video, comment, all that good stuff, help the algorithm out, let me know that you guys like this kind of content. Go back, watch the review if you haven't. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace and love.